Come on, Tony. I got something to show you. You ready? I don't know. We're going to Scott Forge. Hi, I'm Tony. I'm here at Scott Forge with Dallas at the Heat Treat Department. Dallas, how are you doing today? Good, sir. Thanks for having me. I'm glad you're here. Can you tell us a little bit about Scott Forge? Yeah, Scott Forge is a uh... Uh, forging company here in Clinton, Wisconsin, also in Spring Grove and uh, Franklin Park, Illinois. We make big metal parts uh, for different applications uh, that need a heavier duty steel. Uh, and here in Heat Treat, we're just big metal chefs. So you said you work in the Heat Treat department. Can you tell me what Heat Treat means? Yeah, so if you think of Scott Forge as a giant bakery, I'm the, I'm the cook. So I take the pieces and I heat them up and give them different kind of uh, mechanical properties in order to meet what our customers are asking for the steel. Dallas, what does a typical work day look like for you? Well, I'm a lucky guy. Some days I'm on the floor and I'm worried about opening and closing furnaces and reloading them. Some days I'm on straightening, which I would take pieces out of the furnace and make sure that they're straight. And some days I'm uh, on Brunel and I'm hardness checking the steel to make sure we've met the properties uh, that the customer is asking for. And are these all furnaces around us? Correct, yep. We have 16 furnaces here in Clinton, and uh, they're all ranged in different sizes. You have a lot of responsibilities here, and one of them you said is putting pieces in the furnace. Can you tell me the process of how you do that? So it starts out with an order, and an order kind of has a uh, brief summary on the front of it and how to run the piece. And that all depends on what the customer is asking us to make them. So with the piece, we got the steel. That comes down from the forge. And depending on what they want from us, that'll depend on what goes on in the furnace itself. Sometimes they want a piece quenched, and in order to do that, we heat it up to austenite temperature, which is a really hot temperature, around sometimes 1550 to 1600 degrees. And then it would go in either water or polymer, or sometimes air cool. And that will structure, uh, the, the, that will make the microstructure how, how we want it to be. After that quench is done, it'll go back in the furnace for a, what we call a temper and that will soften it up a little bit or bring the part right to where we need it to be. And why do certain pieces have, need to have different temperatures compared to others? Oh, it all depends on the mechanical properties that a customer is asking us to do. It really depends on what the application of the part will be for them. And, and that really varies on the steel as well. You know, when they give us the properties, we'll pick the steel and uh, we'll make the recipe out of that. So after you take them out of the furnace, where did you say you take them? So if a piece is in for a quench, it's going to go in a quench tank, something like that, or you know, seen that one down there, uh, and, and it'll cool off real fast. Um, and then we'll load it back into the furnace, such as those parts right there that are coming out of a temper. And that temper will uh, refine the grains of that steel and, and put them where we want them to give them the mechanical properties after that. And what is a quench tank? So a quench tank is just, it's basically a box in the ground and it's either filled with water, polymer, uh, other companies use other things, but the water is just there to cool the piece rapidly. You know, if you set a hot piece out, it's gonna cool down from the air being surrounded by it. Well, what it does when it goes down there is the heat disperses through the water, allowing it to cool down much faster. So it gives it different mechanical properties. And what are those mechanical properties? You know, you would have like a yield strength or a tensile strength, and that's just different ways of taking testing from a piece, such as how long does it take you to cut through the piece, how long or how much stress does it take to break the piece. So you mentioned the process of straightening. Can you elaborate on that? When a piece comes out of the furnace, sometimes it'll be it'll have a bow in it or, or you know a bend to it. Uh, whether it's a bar or a spindle or something of that nature and it needs to get straightened out because when they go to machine the part it needs to be straight to be able to spin in the lathe uh, to be able to machine it down so what we'll do is we'll, it'll come out of the furnace hot and we'll take it down to the straightening press and we'll roll it and as it rolls we'll watch and see if it goes up or down and if it moves up or down then you know it's a little bent and it needs to be fixed 
then so then we take our press and we push down on it and it takes the bend out of it so then it'll be nice and straight we'll set on the rails it'll cool off after that then it'll go to get be burnelled after that later on how'd you learn how to do all of this well, a lot of guys that have spent a lot of time working with me to teach me those things that have learned it before a lot of it's passed on knowledge um, but really this job comes down to just doing it like most things in the world to learn it you just got to go out and do it and uh, that's how I figured out most of this and being curious asking questions not being afraid to ask somebody what the right answer was so. what are some of the most important factors of working in this department safety is number one uh, you're around a lot of big equipment and big parts that are hot at that, uh, you absolutely have to be observant of your surroundings, pay attention, wear your PPE, it's a loud place, there's stuff flying around sometimes, you know, you wanna wear your safety glasses, hard hat. That's number one, and then uh, next to that, I'd say detail. It, it just goes back to really paying attention to your customers' parts. They're counting on you to, to make the best uh, quality out, and that, that all boils down to detail, paying attention to everything. So. What type of person would be good for this job? Anybody willing to learn. It really comes down to how much uh, effort and patience you have to know, uh, to come in, to make mistakes, and to learn, to ask questions. I think the biggest thing to succeed here is just being willing to work hard, come in every single day, push to be better than the day before. Did you need any schooling prior to working here at Scott Forge? I personally did not go through any schooling before. I have taken classes being here um, that were optional and uh, they, they allowed me to do and paid for me to do computer classes, uh, leadership classes, stuff of that nature. But as far as coming in to get the job, no sir. That's actually one of the things that attracted me to this job was I didn't have to go to college. I wanted to go to work right away. And why'd you pick the heat treat department versus all the other departments offered here, here at Scott Forge? Well, now that I'm here, this is a great job and I really like being here, but at the time, I had no idea what I was getting into. I didn't know what heat treat was, and it was one of the jobs that were open, and I really liked the guy that had offered it to me in the interview, and so I said, you know, I'm going to go with him, and uh, that's how I ended up here, and it worked out really good. I'm glad that I chose this op uh, the opportunity that I was given. And what do you enjoy about working here? The people that you work around are all motivated people. Um, kind of blends in with just being an employee-owned company. The mentality is a lot different when you're here. Everybody cares about the job, and, and people truly care about being successful and making you successful here. I think that's a great uh, thing, you know, day-to-day -day living, that's great. I like to learn, you know, so they, they give me different opportunities to gain more knowledge, and I think that's really something cool. So it seems like you work with a lot of other people here. Would teamwork be an important thing for someone Huge. to ask? Yeah, absolutely. Teamwork is one of the biggest uh, attributes to being successful here. If you're a team player, you'll really succeed. Uh, you have to know, because being an employee owner, you're looking out for the guy next door. Even if he's in machine shop, saw shop, any other job here, you have to be willing to help that guy too. He might not do the same job as you, but you know, if you see him struggling with something, uh, you just lend a hand out because you know that if he's successful, you're successful because you all share in the bigger picture here, so. You mentioned you were employee owned. What does that mean? When you hire into a company like this, you slowly become invested in the company, basically buy your way into owning this company. The company is owned completely by all of us that work here, and as you put more years in, you gain more ownership of that company. We're not overseen by, you know, some big, big wig down the block or something that owns it or that's sitting in his penthouse making a bunch of money off of you. We're all in it together. We're all making a lot of money together. And uh, that's, it's really cool. You know, it makes coming to work a lot more fun when you own a piece of that. Everything in this building, I own a piece of. So I try to take care of everything. And that, that's the same mentality as everybody else. Here. Alex, what advice would you give to someone who's looking into this career? Just do it. <laughs> like Nike, just do it. <laughs> Go in and try it out. And what's the worst case? You know, you don't like it, but I bet you, you probably like it. I had older guys tell me, you know, just stick with it. Stick it out because you'll truly come to enjoy it. And uh, the financial freedom, that's a huge part. And knowing that someday I'll be financially very well off. 
I think uh, anybody would be real happy to, to come to work here. Dallas, I know you're really busy, but thank you for talking with me. Absolutely, thanks for having me. And thank you everyone for watching. If you have any more questions, you can always contact Scott Forge.